Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the East Coast Reflector Zoom Room. Tonight, we're going to have a PowerPoint presentation about the history of Amateur Radio Newsline. I'm Dave, WB8ODF, and I'm one of the, uh, the reporters for Newsline. I've been a reporter for about two years now, and our guest is uh, Paul Brown, WD9GCO, who's one of our anchors and has been around a lot longer than me. Got a couple of things I want to mention. Please, everybody right now, mute your microphones. If you don't know where that is, bottom left of your screen, please keep them muted. And please grab a pen and pencil. If you have any questions, please write them down and Paul will have a, a Q&A at the end. For those of you who can't make it, or those of you who have shamelessly forgotten, we are recording this and it will be on our uh, East Coast Reflector uh, YouTube. I don't know when, but I'm going to guess whenever Amo puts it up there. And uh, Paul, you know Zoom Room probably better than me, so I'm just going to turn things over to you, mute my uh, microphone, and say welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you had me thinking here. I was trying to look back and, and figure out when my first, when I first joined. Um, well, actually, I joined uh, right after our founder passed away. So I'll get into that. So, so welcome and thank you for inviting me. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Paul. Um, I have, I haven't actually been with Newsline for a long time, uh, but I've been listening for a long time. So let me uh, let me give you a little bit of background on myself personally, and then we'll go into the presentation. I've been licensed since 1977. Um, I got uh, I got my novice back then. I got my general the following year. Um, I grew up down in southern Illinois, uh, about an hour outside of St. Louis, and about uh, 20 minutes south of Marissa, Illinois. And I belong to the Marissa Amateur Radio Club, which is Bob Hiles' club. So Bob was one of my Elmers growing up. Uh, in fact, when... Uh, there were uh, three or four of us kids at the club that were studying for our generals and we were all ready to take the test about the same time. And that was back when you had to actually go to the FCC field office to take your test. And the closest one for us was in Kansas city, Missouri. And uh, Bob said, well, I'll tell you what, I've got a business meeting in there next week. Uh, how about all you guys ride along with me in the van I will drop you off at the field office in the morning. I'll go do my business. You guys take your exams. And then when I'm done, I'll come back and pick you up. So we all hopped in the van with Bob. We went to Kansas City and all four of us passed our generals and we celebrated on the way home. So uh, I, it wasn't though until I don't know, five years ago that I actually went for my extra. So um Life, life got in the way. I mean, in college and then, you know, living uh, in a condo and stuff. And so I was really, I, I always kept my license current and I played a little bit on two meters locally, but I couldn't do HF for a long time. And then finally, when the Ham Nation podcast came out, I thought, well, Bob's involved. Let me, let me listen to this. And it got that itch going again. And uh, that's when I decided, you know what, I've still got the radio. Let me, let me, I'm, I'm now president of the homeowners association. So let me educate the board about what we are, what we do and what, what we're not. And so I, uh, um, I got permission. I put up a little vertical in my courtyard and I hooked up the radio and I got back on the air and I realized I still love this hobby. And that's when I got in and I said, you know, it's about time I got my extra. So I went ahead and, and got my extra. So that's where I am today. Um, as far as my involvement with newsline, uh, the Marissa Amateur Radio Club on our repeater once a week would play the uh, original Westlink report, which was the predecessor to Amateur Radio Newsline. We would, uh, somebody once a week would punch up the auto patch, we'd dial into the, uh, the number, and it would play back. So I listened to it every week as a kid, and uh, when our founder, Bill Pasternak, um, passed away, um, I reached out to Don Milbanks, who was kind of the production manager. And I said, I've got, 
I've got experience. I've done radio. I've got the production equipment here at home. I said, I can help. He said, well, send me a, send me a quick audition clip and let me, you know, let me see. So I pulled a script up from like the previous week's thing. And I read a couple of stories and I sent him the file and he said, you're in. And, uh, so, uh, a couple months after that, he and Karen, our, our editor said, how would you like to put on the anchor pants and, uh, and to be one of the anchors in rotation. And I'm like, wow, um, I can try. And turned out that uh, I was fairly comfortable doing that. So for me, being able to be an anchor now on this thing that I listened to as a kid is just like a full circle, really cool thing. And and I love that. And I, I don't take that for granted at all. So let us get into the presentation. Let me do the share thing. We're sharing that one and we're sharing that one in. Boom. And so now we are going to do this. All right. So what is Amateur Radio Newsline? Well, we're a weekly 20-minute ham radio news uh, in, in Bolton program. We've been produced basically nonstop since 1976. The only time that we have not produced was for about a month after Bill passed away because the, the, the staff and everything was really scrambling to try to, to get our feet back underneath us. Bill, as far as, as um, the production and the, the, the business and the back end of it was really a one man show. I mean, he had all the anchors and stuff working with him, but he wrote the scripts. He, uh, he, you know, put it all together. He assembled everything. Um, he handled all of, of, of everything. And, uh, so there was, there was a period of time after he left, uh, before, you know, everybody kind of figured out what was happening. And that's when I came in to help. But other than that, we have, we have not missed a week since we started in 1976. Our mission is to provide relevant news from a ham radio perspective. Uh, we're also are very much focused on developing a, a better understanding of all the facets of our hobby and to, to, you know, ex explain to people what it is that we do and, and all of the different things that we can do. And also something that we very strongly believe in is fostering the interest in amateur radio by young people. And we do, that was something that Bill was very, very passionate about. And that's why he started the Young Ham of the Year Award back in 1985, I believe. And uh, we've done that uh, every year as well, where we honor one, one young ham um, who has been nominated and, and has presented amazing things that they've done above and beyond. And we feel very strongly that that's the future of, of our hobby. What is it that we cover exactly? Well, uh, some of the topics that we cover, changes to licensing procedures, classes and limits, not just here in the United States, but worldwide. Uh, weather conditions that affect radio propagation. Uh, we have Dr. Tamitha Scove in as one of our correspondents. Uh, she is the space weather woman. She is a solar physicist and understands how, and Anna Ham, and understands very much how all of that relates to us. We talk about special radio contests, if there are special DX stations that are on the air and events going on, uh, special event stations we announce, uh, radio-related legal matters, uh, whether at the state level or the federal level, unique personal ham radio stories. We, we like to look up the, the fun ones, um, something, something warm and, and fuzzy uh, or fun. Uh, it's not all straight news. We, we like to kind of mix it up. And then... Uh, silent key obituaries, something which just hit me this uh, way on my way home from work. I heard from the son of one of our longtime members of my local club that he just passed away this afternoon. So the history of Newsline, the first report was produced in Tuesday, June 29th, 1976 by Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF and Jim Hendershot, WA6VQP. It was originally the Westlink Amateur Radio News, which was a news bulletin for the Westlink repeater system in California, where Bill lived. And it was originally just carried on their system. 
Uh, and uh, it was, you know, it wasn't without controversy because some people were saying, well, you're just broadcasting and you can't do that. And then eventually people started to see the value in what we did and that it really was a bulletin, much the same as uh, the ARRL does with their W1AW bulletins. So it continued to grow. And uh, then they said, well, what if we carry this beyond just Westlink? Uh, now, here is a, a sample from one of the early, this is not one of the first ones, but this is one of the ones very early on. The following is a QST. This is Westlink. Good evening. I'm Jim Hendershot in Los Angeles, and this is the Westlink Amateur Radio News. The FCC dropped a deregulation bombshell last week. Bob Thornburg, WB6JPI, reads the details from the ARRL director's letter. This is director's letter number 1697 from the American Radio Relay League, dated September 22nd, 1977. Um, I want to make sure, because I, I made sure I checked the little box. You could hear that, right? Yeah, it sounded great. Okay, good. Um so that was that was kind of the way it, Bill always wanted Newsline to be produced just like a regular radio program. He wanted it to sound professional. He wanted it to sound produced. And uh, the way he did that in the beginning was he was an engineer at a television station. And he strong armed several of the uh, reporters and anchors at his station to read the stories for him. So from the from the very beginning, he had professionals reading the stories, and uh, and uh, he he looked at the news pieces he wrote. He looked at how it was structured and everything. He wanted it to be like a regular news program, just focusing on amateur radio. So it expanded from just local news in the Westlink system to national news, and then it it became the Westlink amateur radio news. And then eventually it just changed to officially amateur radio newsline. Uh, like I said, it was originally produced by Bill's, co uh, Bill's co-workers. Uh, it was expanded later to other anchors producing um, cassette tapes would get FedExed and shipped around the country uh, with, with the different pieces on it. And then somebody would edit it all and put it together and send the master uh, FedExed it to Bill and, uh, then it originally started, Bill would play it into just one answering machine on one phone line. And then, you know, you'd wait your turn, you'd dial in and you'd listen to it. And then uh, eventually he upgraded to a bank of machines on, on a number of lines. And uh, that's where the people who would carry it on their local repeaters would punch it up with the auto patch on the repeater. And they would dial into the bank of answering machines. Now, if you notice in the middle of Newsline, the at the ID break, which is at the 10 minute mark, there's a series of four or five tones that play. And <clears throat> some people wonder, why do you have those? There's no reason. I mean, no, no um, actual reason why they need to be there. Uh, but it's a nod to our history because Bill discovered very early on that when he was playing, he would, he would play it off of a, uh, uh, play it off of a cassette recorder, hold it over the microphone of the answering machine. And he learned early on that that ID break in the middle where he would pause the audio in the report so the local repeater could ID, the answering machine sensed that as, oh, you're done, and would stop the recording. So Bill Punt uh, spliced in the, the five or six tones in the middle there to keep audio playing, to keep the answering machine recording so that we would get the whole report. We just keep it in as a nod to our history. It's just a little piece of inside trivia for us. Uh, there is no, like I said, there's no physical reason why it needs to be there. It just is. Something that we used to have, and we are talking about bringing it back, is the Dayton Town Hall Forum. Every year, Bill would pick a topic, and then he would invite uh speakers to be on a panel to discuss the topic with the audience and it was always a who's who of amateur radio over the years it was very popular it was always very well attended and it was a, one of the most popular features of hamvention um it stopped about a year or so before bill passed away because he just couldn't do it 
And we have all been talking amongst ourselves about wanting to bring this back because some people have asked us, and it was always a fun thing. The organization, we are all volunteers. None of us get paid. Uh, We do this all for the love of it. Uh, The anchors and the correspondents are either media professionals, have had broadcast experience, or are trainees in media. The Young Ham of the Year Award Committee is chaired by Mark Abramovich in T3V. His son is a former Waihati winner. Uh, The voting members of the committee are anonymous, and we want it that way. Uh, Every year when we put out call for nominations, people will nominate young people who they think are worth, you know, worthy of the award and they'll send the packet in and we, we get it. And then we give them, we forward them all to Mark and then Mark hands them off to his committee members. He purposely keeps that isolated from us. That way there's no way that somebody can try to do a, an end run and try to influence us as to, you know, which, which young person should get the award. We don't know. We just, we just get the nomination packets. We give them to Mark. Mark gives them to the committee. The committee reads them amongst themselves, votes on it, and then tells Mark. And then Mark uh, lets us know, and then he produces the interview with uh, the winner. So that is a totally separate but related thing. But yeah, the committee for that is totally anonymous. We don't know who they are. And Mark won't tell us, and we're fine with that because we don't want anybody to try to use us to influence the winner. And we really feel that we're more than just reporters or anchors, that we really are ambassadors for the hobby. So we're all very conscious of that when we go to uh, uh, events like Dayton or Huntsville, where we give out the Young Ham of the Year Award. And uh, in the coming years, we hope to also be able to make appearances at places like Orlando and when we get invited to speak at local ham fest. So we are very conscious of the fact that people look at us kind of as ambassadors of the hobby as well. And I'm proud to be that. Um, this is the one hobby that really has stuck with me my whole life. Uh, it's, it's changed the way, uh, you know, it, it's given me wonderful friends. It's given me this weird little dysfunctional amateur radio newsline family. And really, that's the best way to describe us. Uh, we all get along. Uh, we come from from different walks of life. We have different views on a lot of different things. But when it comes to hanging out on Zoom, or actually we discovered the when we got together again for the first time at Xenia, when the, at the first time they had moved there, we all got, you know, there was like five or six of us got together. And we realized we actually like each other. And uh, we decided that if we could have a physical office where we could all work, we would be the people that we would want to work with. So uh, that's one of the joys of being in this is that we all like each other. We really are family. We watch each other's back. If somebody has a problem or there's an emergency and they can't produce something, or if they've, if they've done something and there was a quick error that there's not enough time for them to fix, we've all learned how to do quick edits and things to get everything producing. It's all about getting the report out and we all watch each other's back and we all help each other out. So that's the best way to describe it is that we are a family. Here's uh, most of our anchors currently. Uh, There's Don Wilbanks at E5DW, who also kind of serves as our production director. Uh, He's one of our our direct links to Bill. Bill brought him on on, uh, a number of years ago, back in the 80s. Uh, There's me. Christian Kudnick, K0STH, uh, also of 100 watts and a wire. He doesn't anchor uh, much now because he's really busy with the uh, with the family and also with uh, the 100 watts and a wire podcast and the YouTube stream. Jim Dameron, NATMW, who uh, is a, a voiceover actor, has actually been in. I mean, he was in Forrest Gump as a, as a character with with a line. So. Uh, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT, is the den mother. She's the one who wrangles all of the cats. And if it if it were not for Karen, and I'm not exaggerating, if it were not for Karen, there would be no amateur radio newsline. She assembles all the stories. She looks for a lot of the leads. Uh, she hands out the assignments to people to record. She picks whoever is anchoring for the week and coordinates that schedule. And she writes the script. 
And uh, it, I mean, Karen works her tail off. Uh, the, uh, the image there, let me explain. Karen and her husband are registered wildlife rehabilitators, and she specializes in squirrels. So we all just call her the news squirrel. And uh, I asked uh, Mike Askins, one of our correspondents, is also a cartoonist. So I, I, I emailed Mike. I said, Mike, I said, we need a drawing for Karen. And that's what he came up with. Stephen Kinford, N8WB, Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF, down there in New Zealand. And Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, who also produces the Ham Talk Live podcast. Uh, Neil, at one point, well, he's also involved with the Youth on the Air uh, program here in the United States. He was one of the coordinators for the camp that just happened, and he is one of the advisors for that group as well. He, at one point in time, when he, uh, when he first got licensed, he was the youngest amateur in the country. He was five years old when he got his novice license. He was on the cover of QST Magazine. So Neil has been a ham basically his entire life. And he is really dedicated to it. And, uh, and he's, uh, you know, he's one of our regular anchors. Today, Newsline is much different as far as production than it was back in the old days. Everything is done digitally, thanks to the internet. We have correspondents all over the world. We've got them in Australia, New Zealand, Germany, England, and here across the United States. And thanks to that, we have a common Dropbox folder where we all share audio files. Karen sends out, uh, you know, the, the assignments. Everybody has their own recording equipment at home. We'll record our pieces. We'll edit them, clean them up, put them up in the Dropbox. The script lives up there. And whoever's anchoring then just logs in, grabs all the files, brings them down, and assembles a newscast. Um, so, yeah, so we all have, you know, the equipment at home to do this. It's, uh, it's amazing what you can do now with just essentially, I mean, if I had to, I could produce it on the road with a laptop and, uh, and the interface and a microphone. In fact, I did one story where I had been trying to get a hold of a person for an interview and it just, we just kept missing each other. And so my wife and I were going out of town for the weekend and I knew I had a deadline coming up. So I packed, uh, I packed the MacBook and I packed the mic interface and uh, I packed the microphone and a little stand and uh, he, he got a hold of me. I did my interview with him. I've got an app on my iPhone that records the phone call. So I did my interview standing in the parking garage where I got signal. And then I came into the hotel room and I set up on the table. I took pillows off of the uh, off cushions off of the couch to make myself a little recording booth. And I produced my story and I uploaded it right there and made the deadline. So here's a sample of one of the more recent Newsline stories. Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2,271 with a release date of Friday, May 7th, 2021 to follow in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The following is a QST. A preeminent ham convention gets virtual replacement, fences get good shortwave reception, and were microwaves used as weapons in Washington, D.C.? All this and more as Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2,271 comes your way right now. From around the world, this is Newsline. Amateur Radio's independent, on-the-air news and bulletin service. And now reporting from Valparaiso, Indiana, here's Paul Brown, WD9GCO. In Germany, hams are getting... A now, all of us have our own introductions. Um... Some of them were just recorded by a, a, a voiceover guy that uh, Don knows. Don's is recorded by Bill Pasternak. Um, mine is recorded by Skip Spence, who is the DJ that got me in, started in broadcast radio in the first place back when I was in high school. And uh, I recently reconnected with him over Facebook, and he's still in the business. So I sent him a message. I said, I'm doing this thing now. I said... Would you mind recording my intro for me? And he said, sure. So for me, it's a nice little thing every time I, re I uh, anchor. Uh, it's meaningful to me. That's the guy that started me in radio, and he gets to introduce me every time that I anchor. 
The structure of Newsline, it's two program blocks. Occasionally, if there's something very, very important, we will stretch it into three, but we keep it into two 10-minute or so blocks. There is a station ID break at 10 minutes. Most reports are between 17 to 20 minutes long. Uh, If we have a story that's very important that we feel Uh, including much more information or much more audio from an interview is worth listening to. We will produce, excuse me, we will produce that as an extra, and then we will put that up on the website so people can download that separately and listen to it. I've done that a number of times. There was one year where I actually interviewed two hams who were over a hundred years old. The first one was Cliff Kahart, who at the time was a sprightly 104 Now, unfortunately, Cliff just passed away uh, this year or late last year, and he was 108. Uh, But he was one of the engineers who the United States military had sent to Iwo Jima ahead of the invasion. And his job was to help set up a radio tent and the radio communications equipment to help with the invasion. Um, So he... You know, I was interviewing him about something else, and then I started asking him about what it was like to be a ham at the time World War II broke out. So he started telling me great stories, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to shut up and let him talk. And uh, I got great stuff. And then another guy had been a ham and had been on the air when Pearl Harbor was attacked. And he was telling me what it was like. All of a sudden, people were saying, you got to get off the air. And he's like, what? He said, no, put, put on, put on the radio. You've got to get off the air right now. And so he was talking about that. And it's another one where that was unrelated to the entire, you know, the original reason I called him and I'm like, no, 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 just shut up. Let this guy talk and we'll do something with it. So I edited both of their stories together into an extra piece that we put out on Pearl Harbor day that year. And, uh, sometimes, you get stuff that you weren't expecting. That's just too good to not use for something. And that was a case where these two guys were just telling their, their experiences with the war. And I'm like, Oh no, no people need to hear this. So we have that opportunity. Thanks to the website where we can put extra stuff up there if we need to. Some of the features we have on a regular basis, nets of note. If somebody tells us about a net that's unique or has been going on a long time, Uh, I recently did a story about the Illini net, which is an HF net started in 1976 by a guy who had been working for the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. And he retired and he had a friend of his who was going to move away. So he made arrangements for the following Thursday to uh, get together with this guy on the air and talk. And that turned into a weekly thing. Uh, so, uh, and it's been going ever since 1976. So that was the kind of thing I wanted to talk about. If we have a net that's, a uh, dedicated to a special topic or a fun theme or whatever, we'll talk about that as well. World of DX is special DX listings or expeditions, rare stations that we know are going to be operating on the air for a certain amount of time. Uh, amongst those of us who have to read these, we like to call it the let's see what impossible pronounced names Karen's given me this week feature, because uh, a lot of those a lot of those foreign names are just I end up a lot of time going on YouTube and trying to find some sort of new story somewhere where somebody has pronounced it. So I at least have an idea because some of them, it's like either that or I just pronounce it wrong but with authority and hope that nobody calls me on it. And then the kicker, the final story is usually a humorous or a a touching, a lighthearted ham radio, human interest story. Uh, Something, you know, somebody, somebody, we had one where um, a guy, uh, a newer ham was talking to somebody, an older ham. And he said, he found out his name and he found out where he lived. He said, hang on a minute. And he, he went and he dug through his QSL cards and he found out that his first contact as a novice, like 60 years ago, was with this guy's late father, who was also a novice. So he found the QSL card and he sent it to the, the guy. So it's things like that that we like to do in, in, the, uh, in the end story. Now, here's your chance. 
you want to go ahead and just read this script to yourself and see how you do with it. And it's not all, not only some of the weird names like Halahuga Island, but a lot of the DX call signs are really a mouthful when you're trying to say them, especially if you're not used to them, like 4JF1BAKU. And if you're trying to just read through them and it's like, Ugh. so yeah, the world of DX is always Karen's chance to get back at us. Distribution today is fairly easy. It's distributed either late Thursday night or early Friday morning, depending on what time it uh, the finished product goes up. Uh, Kevin Trotman is our webmaster and also our Facebook uh, and Twitter master, and he is the one who, who uploads the stories. Um, they show up on the website. They also automatically get fed into uh, a newscast, uh, podcast feed. So you can go to the website. And we have the script up there in written form. We have the MP3 file. You can stream it off the website or download it and play it later. If you have a podcast application, you can subscribe to us where it just automatically shows up as soon as uh, Kevin pushes it out. Uh, we put a link to it on Facebook as well. There is an Echo Producer file available in the proper format for Echo Link. And for internet connected repeater controllers, that's how my local repeater here uh, carries it uh, on Thursdays. Let's see, what is it? 730? About, about an hour ago, uh, it hit the website and it grabbed last week's report and, uh, and it's ready. It'll be playing tonight at, uh, in an hour from now. And uh, if you have, uh, if you want to know about that, if you have a repeater and you want to carry it, uh, just let us know. Just email us. Uh, this guy named Dave uh, has scripts uh, if you want to uh, use it on an IRLP connected repeater. So he knows how to do that stuff. So he'd be the guy to ask about that. There are other places you can listen to. Like I mentioned, there's VHF, UHF repeaters all around the world that carry us once a week. Uh, we also, it's carried on IRLP, on uh, Echo Link, on the conference newsline, and on shortwave.de. And I just found out that if you, uh, and I don't know the uh, extension number, but if you have Hamshack Hotline, if you have one of the connected VoIP phones, there is an extension you can dial, and it also plays out newsline as well on demand. There is a video only from Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2156. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, February 27th, 2019. We're back on the ocean journey of Gene Socrates, VE0JS, a record-setting Canadian YL who is sailing around the world with her amateur radio. Jan Socrates, VE0JS, is crossing time zones and setting records. Amateur Radio Newsline caught up with Jan back in our report last November as the 76-year-old retired mathematics teacher was part way through her solo sail around the world aboard her yacht, the SV Narita. Remind me to go back and fix this slide so that doesn't play automatically. Uh, Don Wilbanks puts together a video uh, version that's just uh, headlines. It's not the full newscast. It's just a couple of stories and just short little pieces of it. Uh, that plays on the Ham Nation podcast, which uh, originally started out on the Twit Network, but uh, about a year and a half ago moved over to the Ham Radio Crash Course YouTube channel. And it's there every two weeks. And uh, there's also an audio version of it that you can subscribe to as well. Um, okay. Okay. Another important thing that we do is the Bill Pasternak WA6ITF Memorial Young Ham of the Year Award. Uh, it was started by Bill in 1986 to encourage youth in amateur radio. Uh, we present the award every year at the Huntsville Ham Fest in Huntsville, Alabama, except for this past year because of COVID. Uh, the award was presented to the uh, 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 presented uh, virtually. Um, 
And uh, we really hope that next year we can get back to doing it again in person. Uh, it's sponsored by Newsline. It's also sponsored by CQ Magazine and Yezu, Heil Sound and Radio Waves Antennas. Uh, so the, the winner not only gets the, the plaque and the award, but also gets a nice little prize package with a radio and, and a headset and, and, and some, some other stuff. So, but the, uh, the, the kids that, that win this, uh, it's, it's more than just, you know, I, I, I got my extra when I was nine. Um, these are young people who have gone way above and beyond. They've, they've organized things in their community. They've, uh, one of them organized a number of uh, ISS contacts with school groups, um, set up local repeaters, emergency communication system, coordinated a variety of different things. Uh, the package for the, uh, the one that won this year, I think the uh, nomination package was 26 pages long. So these are remarkable young people that have won this award. We are proud of them all. Uh, some of them have, uh, quite a few of them have stayed as hams. They've gone on to do amazing things as adults. Um, some of them have drifted away from the hobby, but they, they still all have uh, really bright futures. And they really, they were just astounding. Uh, you know, and, and I look back at what I was doing when they were their age and I'm like, wow, okay, I'm just going to go home now. So, uh, we're, we're really excited that we get to do this and it, it really has introduced us to some amazing people. If you want to contact us, the primary source to get a hold of us is our website, which is arnewsline.org. If you have questions and tips for news stories, you can email us at newsline at arnewsline.org. If you have a repeater, uh, that's carrying it. We have a list on the website of repeaters that we know of that's carrying it. You can submit yours to it if it's not on the list and we'll add it so people can find out when and where to listen to it. We have a Facebook group and we are also on Twitter at AR Newsline. So uh, yeah, that photo is from uh, when we uh, did our first booth at Xenia, uh, the first time we, uh, we all kind of got together as a group. Um, that's me there second from the right. I mean, from the left, um, Don Wilbanks is there. That's Karen, uh, Karen Eve, our editor, Jim Dameron, Kevin Trotman, our webmaster, and there's Neil. And I can't see who's all the way on the right because the photos are hiding that. Okay, here's just a couple little fun things that went wrong. The following is a QST. Now Keepsake of this year's field day. All this and more as Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2071 comes your way right now. Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2048 with... <clears throat> Say that again, Allie. For now, with Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team worldwide, I'm Paul Brown, WD9GCO in Valparaiso, Indiana, saying 73. And as always, we got your news right here. All right. In this week's world of hard-to-pronounce countries, listen for Willie, KB8YRX. Uh that photo probably needs a little explanation. Uh, Neil, we all, we all take turns playing pranks. Most of the time we play them on Don because he's an easy target and he takes it very well and he dishes it out just as good as he gets. Neil contacted me. He said, you know what? We really need to have a stand up Don Wilbanks at the booth. And I said, all right. So we, uh, we figured out, we, we printed out, we blew up a photo of Don and we printed out a bunch of them and we glued them together and I put them on a piece of cardboard and uh, we made that. I, I have since done a more permanent one printed out on sign material that's got a permanent stand that we can always have Don with us, even if he can't be there. So, all right. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, 
Okay. Hate silence, don't you? I know I bathed this morning. <laughs> uh, let me go back to uh, back to gallery view here. Uh, you mentioned IRLP <clears throat> as it being. Uh, I know Dave did some scripts, and I used to run the the news line on IRLP. Is there anything for All Star? Um. I don't know. Can I, can I take that one, Paul? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Henry, uh, talk to Press. Press, um, he knows it inside and out, and he and I have gone back and forth on uh, why does anybody need to pause 20 seconds four times in a newscast? But, yes, you can get it on All Star by calling press. Okay. <laughs> press okay. asks us for help all the time. I like to send it right back to him. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. And um, yeah, um, our now our repeater, which right off the top of my head, I can't remember our node. Our repeater is on All Star. And uh, we carry it every Thursday evening at 8 30 p.m. Central Time. Um yeah, great. Now I'm right off. I'm under the gun. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I should have. I should have said yeah, that question. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to. I because I do know occasionally we'll have people dial in, and because uh, when I I do check ins, just kind of an informal thing after newsline plays. And occasionally I get people calling in from Georgia, and I know they're not coming directly on our repeater, so. All right. Anybody else? Should be a, who, who should be the first contact if you have a new story idea? Um, Karen or? The newsline at arnewsline.org. Okay. Karen checks that mailbox. Okay. And uh, she'll look it up and uh, she'll often, you know, forward it to one of us if it looks like it's, it's like up our alley or if it's, you know, because um, I, I tend to be the one who does uh, interviews with people just because um, I, I like to have actuality audio in the story because it, it makes it a little more, a little more interesting. So if it's, it sounds like something that somebody would, we should talk to about, She'll usually send that to me, but yeah, send it to the, the newsline at arnewsline.org and uh, Karen gets those. Same thing if you have ideas for uh, the nets of note thing. If, you, if you're involved in a net that's kind of fun or different uh, and you think we should talk to somebody about it, send us some information and, and possibly if you know who to contact, that always helps. All right, last call for Q&A. All right, well, Paul, thank you very much for coming here. Like I said earlier, I've been here like two years now. I had no idea about three quarters of that. So uh, it's again, a, yeah, it's a long storied history. And it's, it's a thing that I'm, I'm just damn proud to be part of now and carrying on Bill's legacy. That's one thing I should mention. Um, unfortunately, I never got a chance to meet Bill and actually neither did Karen because, uh, when Bill was, was sick near the end, um, he, he told Don, he said, you got to find somebody to, to be editor. He said, I, I can't do this right now. And so Don, uh, you know, put out a call and Karen was one of the first ones to respond and she's been. Uh, she's been a, a newspaper editor. She's worked in radio, but most of her life has been spent uh, working on newspapers in New York. And uh, and Don showed you know showed Bill her uh, her credentials, and he said hire her now. And um, she did. And Bill died two days later. Wow. Whoa. So Karen unfortunately never got a chance to meet Bill either. So there are those of us who only know of Bill through his reputation and through people who did know him. And there's one thing that 
is absolutely true. I have never heard anybody say anything about Bill Pasternak that wasn't glowing and and warm. Uh, the man, the man was just a wonderful human and made friends everywhere, and uh, and that's the legacy that we're living up to. Um, we're doing this in Bill's memory, and because there are thousands of people that listen, and that's one thing I I've, I wanted to mention when we go out in the public. Uh, there was the thing that struck me the first time there at Xenia is that, you know, we sit here in our basement, often just in our shorts, and we record this thing and we upload it to the box. And we don't know if <laughs> anybody is listening to it besides us. Uh, but when you go out to a ham fest and all weekend long, people streaming by and saying how much they enjoy it, they look forward every week to listening to Newsline and they remember you know, what a wonderful person Bill was and all this. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's definitely worth doing this because there are people that listen. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really when you put faces to, uh, what's on the other side of the computer screen, it's, it's an amazing feeling. So. Well, I want to throw this in. Yeah. I've been with uh, newsline for just a little over two years now. And, uh, I listened to it for years and years, and I said, I want to be part of that. So I sent uh, an email to Karen Eve Murray, and she said, well, send an audition tape uh, or CD or MP3, whatever, and uh, uh, let Don hear it. So you mentioned that you had uh, talked about the story the week before. If you remember going back far enough to the Space Bees uh, story. I, uh, I read the space bees story. I sent it to Don. Don got back to me and he said, Dave, I like the read, but, and I don't think anybody's going to say this other than me. I can hear your entire room. You've got, uh, you got you a microphone there, uh, that I can hear the whole room. And which is true. I, I noticed you said, well, I put pillows here and pillows there to do your story. I didn't. I have this condenser mic that I'm using and it does. It picks up every noise. And again, he said, uh, nobody else is going to mention this but me and I'm going to mention it. So with that, uh, uh, Karen gave me an email and said, welcome aboard. Yeah. And then that's that's very true is that we all will help each other because you know you, you go with the theory that a rising tide lifts all boats um we all help each other with tips and suggestions on how to to make all of us sound better so yep and we have a zoom room just like this one that we go in and you have to have your pants on but we go in there and have fun like we do here on the east coast reflector zoom room yeah our ours um uh, the last time uh, during during the pandemic it was a little easier we we tried doing them like every two weeks or once a month and we were pretty good at it and then yeah then then you we let started it go. getting busier again but we still do them as often as we can and the last one went for what don said they ended up sticking around for four hours whoa so i mean yeah we we like each other yeah i and i agree with that so to end this let me ask First of all, is there any comments or questions uh, before we let Paul go? Okay. All right. Paul, it was fantastic. Like I said, I didn't know this. I, I had a great time tonight, and I'm glad you were here. I did, uh, in one of our Zoom rooms, I heard Paul say, well, I got a PowerPoint presentation. I went, whoa. And I invited him, and I said, Dick, what do you think of this? Dick said, yes, yes, bring them on. So uh, I really do appreciate, well, we all appreciate tonight's presentation. And we're happy to do this. Um, I've done this. Don's done it. Neil has done it. And I think Karen's done one. So just let people know um, that's it. I mean, we're willing to do this. There's like right now, there's like four of us that have done these. And uh, we are all more than happy to to join in and make presentations, whether it's for a club or just to get together like this or whatever. And hopefully when we can start doing stuff in person again, we can, uh, cause Don and I have done, uh, done one of these at a ham fest, uh, in person. 
And that was fun too. So, but yep, we're more than happy to get the word out. We love what we do. So well, thanks Karen's for inviting been me. In here. Well, you're welcome. Karen's well, been in here three or four times and uh, she's always had a good time and she's, she's funny and she likes squirrels. What else can you say? <laughs> well, on behalf of the East Coast Reflector, Paul, thank you for coming tonight. And this uh, Zoom room runs 24-7, so come back wow. and say hello. There's always somebody in here, night and All day, right. pretty much. So same URL, okay. faces change, call signs change, but we call it the Adult Daycare Center for... <laughs> Old amateur radio operator. And no tech support on, what is it, uh, Monday through Sunday, no tech support? Oh, wait, no, Tuesday we have the tech net. Let's mention that. Uh, that's at 8 o'clock every Tuesday night, uh, 8 Eastern. So, all right, Paul, unless you have something else, uh, thank nope. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you You're very welcome. Thank you. Enjoy. Right. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. Um, so, Emil, you can go ahead and stop recording.